Yesterday, a beautiful house stood here. Today, after a tragic fire, that home is only a memory. This was once Jimmy's room. It used to be his favorite place, his own private world. Now there's not much left. Susan remembers her room, too. Hey, have you seen that cute guy? Isn't he a dream? The oh. privacy and comfort it once offered. She never dreamed her room would one day look like this. Jimmy and Susan's parents feel the loss, too. That cozy family room where everyone gathered to watch TV now is gone, along with the rest of the house they worked so hard for. Yet as the Harveys remember how their home burned, they can still be thankful for one thing. They all escaped the flames unhurt. Fire insurance will help the Harveys rebuild their house. But even so, the sorrow of this moment will not be soon forgotten. Every day, this sad story is repeated hundreds of times as helpless families watch their homes and dreams go up in smoke. What's worse, these needless fires often cause serious injuries, even death. That's why you need to practice fire safety every day. Let's see what fire safety is all about. Let's see what you can do to protect your home and yourself from the danger of fire. Place away from any source of heat. Now here's a mistake. Never store gasoline or kerosene in a glass container. It could break, spill the contents, and create a serious fire hazard. So always store gasoline and kerosene in properly marked metal cans. Rags that have been soaked in paint thinner, motor oil, or furniture polish are another fire hazard, if they're stored improperly, like this. Over a period of time, oily rags can produce enough heat to burst into flame. This is called spontaneous ignition, and it's a real danger. So store oily rags in a closed metal container that has an airspace underneath to get rid of heat. There's one kind of flammable material you don't need to store. Plain old trash. An attic or a closet like this is a perfect place for a fire to start. Protect your home from fire by getting rid of trash, rubbish, old newspapers, junk, any unwanted material that could be few for a fire. Another way you can prevent fire is to be careful when you use appliances and electricity. A burner left on when not in use is an invitation to disaster, especially if little brother is in the mood for a hot dog. So turn off any appliance you're not using. Here's another hazard, an overloaded electrical outlet. Too many appliances plugged into the same outlet can cause electric wires to overheat and start a fire. Don't make this mistake. Use fewer appliances at a time and plug them into the wall outlet, not a, not a socket attachment or an extension cord. You can help prevent fire by practicing the rules of safety. Let's review them. Be alert. Remind grown-ups never to smoke in bed or when they're sleepy. Use matches safely. Close the cover or box before striking a match. Make sure the match is out before you throw it away. And keep matches out of the reach of young children. Use and store flammable materials properly. Store gasoline, kerosene, and other flammable liquids in properly marked metal containers away from heat. And use such liquids only in well-ventilated areas, or preferably out of doors. 
Put oily rags in a covered metal container to prevent spontaneous ignition. And keep your home free from trash and rubbish. Also, be careful with appliances and electricity. Turn off or unplug appliances that are not in use and never overload electric outlets. Fire sometimes gets out of control in spite of everything we do to prevent it. That's why you need to know how to be prepared when fire strikes. Most home fires start at night when you're asleep. By the time the fire is discovered, you may have only seconds to get out of the house. That's why you need to plan your escape in advance before fire strikes. Here's how. First, tour your home and choose two escape routes from each room. A normal route, such as a door, and an emergency route, such as a window. Make sure it's a window you can open easily. It's a good idea to make a simple drawing of your bedroom escape routes to help you remember. You can post the drawing on a wall or on a closet door. By the way, always sleep with your bedroom door shut. The door can keep smoke and deadly gases from coming into the room and give you more time to escape. During a fire, test the door before you open it. If the door feels hot, or if you see smoke coming in at the edges, do not use the door, use your emergency exit. If you think it's safe, but you're not sure, block the door with your body like this. Then, open it a little. If heat and smoke rush in, slam the door shut. After you've chosen your two exits from each room, Decide on a way to wake up and warn other members of your family should you discover a fire. You can yell fire, or pound on the walls, or <coughs> blow a whistle. Anything to wake everyone up. Next, pick a spot outside where everyone will meet after getting out of the house. There you can make sure everyone is safe. Once you're out of a burning house, stay out. Never go back in. You might get trapped inside. Finally, go to the nearest telephone booth or alarm box and call the fire department. We'll take over from there. Don't risk your life trying to fight fires or save possessions. That's our department. Now, let's see how these safety measures could save your life should you discover a fire in your home. It's the middle of the night and you're awakened by the smell of smoke. Your first impulse should be to warn others in your family. Fire! 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 Remember, test the door of your first escape route. If it's safe, exit quickly. Get yourself and everyone else to safety. Never mind getting dressed, just get out. But if the door is hot or leaking smoke, use your emergency escape. Leave your possessions behind. Outside, go to your agreed upon meeting place and stay there until you're sure everyone is out safely. Quick, Paul, run to the neighbors and get the fire department. Then call the fire department. Fire department, my name is Paul West and I'd like to report a fire at 12.32 South Maple. To report any fire, yes. give your name and the address where the fire is burning. Then wait to answer any questions. Remember, if you discover a fire in your home, warn others in the house. Get out fast and leave your possessions behind. Fire! Fire! Go to your outside meeting place. My name is Paul when West, everyone is out safely, call Maple. the fire department. Yes. Yes. All right. But now, suppose a fire has you trapped in your room. What should you do? First of all, keep calm. Panic won't help. 
Stuff rugs or clothing into cracks to keep smoke and gases out of the room. Then open the window and yell for help, signaling with a towel or sheet. If help was on the way, put off jumping as long as possible. But if you must jump, slide out the window feet first and hang by the sill. Aim for bushes or shrubs that will help cushion your fall. Push yourself out slightly as you let go and relax as you fall. Remember, jump only as a last resort. Now here's something that no home should be without, a fire extinguisher. Dry chemical or carbon dioxide extinguishers are best for general household use. Keep one on each floor of your home and know how to use it. And this device is probably even more important than a fire extinguisher. It's called a smoke detector. It won't put out a fire or prevent one from starting, but it will warn you and your family of a fire even if you're sound asleep. Watch what happens when smoke reaches the detector. This kind of alarm system can give you several extra minutes to escape. In a fire, that can save your life and the lives of the other members of your family. No home should be without this kind of protection. Your home isn't the only place where you must be alert to the danger of fire. If a fire occurs in your school, leave the building in the same orderly manner that you practice during fire drills. Walk quickly, but avoid running. In any other large building, always notice where the emergency exits are, so you can get out quickly in case of fire. Yes, you can protect your home, your possessions, and yourself from the danger of fire, if you'll practice fire safety every day. Remember, fighting fire is our department. But fire safety is your department.